And we'll go on to the next thing uh, in our list of core equipment, and that would be the audiometer. And there's a lot of things to think about on an audiometer. That's the, the most basic piece of audiological instrumentation. And the first question might be, is it going to be clinical or diagnostic? Uh, one channel or two channel? And those terms are not very well specified. Some manufacturers will call an audiometer a clinical audiometer. Some will call it a diagnostic audiometer, and they almost interchange those. All right, so that doesn't help much. One channel and two channel does help uh, somewhat, even though the manufacturers disagree on what two channel means. The most basic definition of two channels is that it has two interrupters, two attenuators, two input switches, two output switches that are identical, uh, two VU meters, and two external inputs. But not every manufacturer of this equipment uses that definition. So what do they mean by one channel or two channel? It is better to know what kind of testing you're going to do and will that audiometer be able to do it. Uh, a strictly one channel audiometer is not going to give you binaural speech. It's not going to be able to do a stinger. It won't be able to do uh, uh, some of the more sophisticated speech testing. Uh, does it have to be portable? Are you going to take it to another office or to uh, another location? Um, and when it comes to clinical audiometers, like you would use here, there are basically three categories. There is a conventional audiometer. Do you still have the GSI-61 down there? Okay, that's a conventional audiometer. Uh, you write an audiogram with that. Yeah? You, you draw an audiogram. That's a conventional audiometer. And then there is a PC-based audiometer. You still have that Matson um, Astera? Astera? Yeah. Okay, that's a PC-based audiometer. Even though it has some knobs on it and buttons, that is just like a keyboard, a custom keyboard. Uh, I was on the design team of that, that system uh, when it was designed 10 years ago, over 10 years ago. Uh, but that's a PC-based audiometer. It runs on a computer, and if there's no computer, it doesn't, it, it doesn't exist. Uh, it is PC-based. Uh, and then there is what's most popular nowadays, and that is a hybrid. It's both. It's a conventional audiometer in that it looks like a conventional audiometer like this. Uh, it looks like a conventional audiometer. It operates like a conventional audiometer. And you can use it as a conventional audiometer. You can still draw your audiograms on a, on a, uh, a test report form. Uh, but you can also hook it up to a computer. And uh, when you are finished your audiogram, for example, you can hit data transfer and it will pop into software where you can then transfer uh, a patient report that it will create, uh, that the software will create into electronic medical records. And that is, uh, that is very, very common today. If the computer goes down, well, it still operates, though nobody's gonna like it because they have to actually draw an audiogram. They go, oh, God forbid. Uh, but that has happened. I had a, uh, I just had one in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, everything went down. And she goes, I wonder if I have any audiogram forms. Not used to uh, writing an audiogram. I've got to remember the symbols for left and right, and mask and no mask, and, you know, uh, because so used to printing it out, you know, uh, and, uh, ju or just having it electronically, not even printing it out, uh, just uh, seeing it on the computer and then uh, moving it to somewhere else electronically. So anyway. It is either conventional, uh, PC-based, or a hybrid where it's both, okay? Uh, and there are some accessories that are kind of standard. Uh, bone conduction, if, it, if the audiometer has bone, all clinical or diagnostic audiometers would have bone, well, the bone conduction is going to come with it. A headset, regular audiometric headset is going to come with it. Uh, if it has talkback, the talkback mic will come with it. But there are certain things that don't come with any audiometer. For example, sound field speakers. That's always an option. You know? uh, VRA isn't even part of an audiometer. 
even though it might have switches that say VRA on them. Uh, so some, you have to know which accessories are standard that are going to come with it and which accessories don't come with it, uh, like for example sound field or VRA. Uh, some things are options, like high frequency is always an option. High frequency would extend the frequency range of the audiometer from the, the, the typical or conventional frequency range, which is 125 hertz through 8,000 hertz. It would extend it, and then it would be 125 hertz through 20,000 instead of 8,000. High frequency testing. So if you're doing ototoxicity and things like that, then certainly that's, that's an option that you would want to have. Uh, insert earphones is sometimes standard, but many, many times it is an option. Then you would have headphones and insert phones. Just make sure that you're going to have that because there are, uh, most, most clinics want to use insert phones normally unless you have a reason not to. Uh, for example, the patient has otitis externa, and you don't want to put uh, an earplug in that patient. Right? Uh, okay, I'm going to pass around now a brochure on the um, Audio Star Pro. Do, you, do they have one of those here? Okay, all right. So I wanted you in particular, let me have one. I wanted you in particular to look at the back of this when you get it. The back of it are the specifications. Uh, you could read the rest of it and it's going to tell you how nice it is and, uh, and, and, and all of that. So you, you'll want to read a brochure like that. But I, you, you might be especially interested in the specifications. Most people that read brochures, when they see the back page with the specs on it, they go, oh boy, well, and they, they don't bother with that. But notice as you look at these, it gives you some things that you might want to know, like the length and width of it. In other words, do I have enough room? Some, some, sometimes there isn't a lot of desk space, so the footprint is, is important. It'll tell you whether it's two channels or not, like this one says that it's two independent channels. It's, it's, absolute, it's absolutely a two-channel audiometer when they say two independent identical channels like that. The AudioStar Pro is absolutely two channels, so there's no test you could not do with it. Uh, it tells you the frequency range, uh, gives you the frequency range of air conduction, bone conduction, sound field, uh, inserts, and uh, will give you information about special tests. This does ABLB, SISI high frequency with an option. The 10 test, the quicksyn test, which is getting extremely popular, right? These are tests that are built in. Uh, and even special tests, you know, like the stinger test, a pure tone stinger, a speech stinger, right? Uh, of course, talk forward, talk back, that's, that's standard. Uh, what about the ability to put a monitor in the booth so that you could come into the booth and operate the audiometer in the booth? So you could have a portable audiometer to do play audiometry in the booth with the patient, or you could have uh, just a monitor, maybe on a swing arm, that you can swing out, and now you see the screen of the audiometer uh, inside the booth on this wall-mounted flat screen and you just bring in your mouse, your wireless mouse or keyboard or both, and you can operate the audiometer fully and absolutely inside the booth with the patient and do play audiometry in there. That's very helpful. Yeah. Uh, so all kinds of things to consider on this type of audiometer. I'm going to give you another brochure. This is a Grayson Stadler Pello. P-E-L-L-O. I don't know where that name comes from. But um, if you looked at the back of this, these specifications look pretty similar. similar. Uh, when you get down to how many channels, it says 1.5, like it's one and a half channels. Many uh, audiometer manufacturers will use that 
they'll say, well, it's not two channels, it's one and a half channels. That's why it's more important to know because manufacturers will all say different things about how many channels. If it's one channel, well, then you know you can't do special tests. But two channels, one and a half channels, what do they mean by that? This audiometer would not fit the, the definition of two channel, two interrupters, two attenuators, two input switches, two output switches that are identical, two VU meters and two external inputs. But it would meet 90% of that. And if you look at the tests that it does, which includes the quick sin, ABLB, Stinger, and everything, that for many, many people, many, many clinics, this will do everything that you want to do and more. And the difference in price, the AudioStar Pro is approximately $9,500, and the Pello is approximately $6,500. Right? Now, of course, it doesn't include sound field. Uh, that's always an option. But, uh, so you have to know what accessories come with it. But uh, that might be a way of saving a substantial amount of money um, by choosing another audiometer, but you just have to make sure that it will do all the tests that you can foresee yourself doing. How about portable audiometers? Sometimes you want one of these in the booth or you need them in your clinic. You'll be doing uh, at least screening somewhere else and something like that. So the most popular manufacturer of clinical audiometers is Grayson Stabler. Uh, I knew the founder, Mr. Grayson. Uh, I knew his son, Lee Grayson. Mr. Grayson, who started the company Grayson Stadler, died in 2005. And the company was sold seven times uh, until it finally was sold to William DeMont. Once it was sold to William, William DeMont, they went way, way, because uh, they, they, they're very good at putting a lot of research and development into things and developing new products. So things changed drastically when it was sold to them. Anyway, in portable audiometers, the most popular manufacturer is Mako, M-A-I-C-O. You probably have Mako audiometers here. Uh, they sell more uh, portable screening audiometers than all the other manufacturers of portable audiometers put together. Uh, so, um, and they have uh, models that you, you know, they come with a carrying case, some that have a handle built in and you don't need a, a carrying case. Um, this is a MA25, that's an MA27. You have older versions of MA27s here. Uh, Grayson Stadler has one, GSI 18. Uh, and Mako has uh, an air only, that 99% of portables are air only. They're used in school systems and everything. There's hundreds and hundreds of them in every state. Uh, but they're also air bone and masking and air bone speech and masking. So this is an MA41, which is air bone and speech. MA40 is just air and bone. Of course, when you have bone, you have masking, because you always have to mask in bone. Uh, and just like the clinical, the, the modern clinical audiometers, they have uh, speech lists built in, right? So you don't have to do live voice all the time anymore uh, because there's uh, this commonly used speech list and even special tests like QuickSyn are built in. Uh, and you could just click on the word and it's presented to the patient. Uh, and if you're doing word discrimination, you can click on the word and it's presented and then you can you can choose correct or incorrect depending on their response and it will calculate the score for you. You're used to that. But even a, a portable can do some of those things. And there are even automated audiometers, okay? This uh, AMTAS by Grayson Stadler came out just uh, a year ago and it has become extremely, extremely popular. Uh, AMTAS stands for uh, Automated method for testing auditory sensitivity. Automated method for testing auditory sensitivity, AMTAS. And there's an AMTAS TAS Flex and an AMTAS Pro. The, uh, the regular AMTAS, uh, like I'm showing you, is like a tablet, like an iPad, a tablet computer, and plugged into that is a headset. 
The headset is circumoral, uh, which has a noise reduction earmuff on it. And you can have this in your waiting room and do hearing screenings. It can either do a hearing screening automatically. The person just holds the, uh, the tablet and say, do you hear the tone? Uh, and they'll respond yes or no by just touching that, and then it will go on. Uh, it doesn't cue the patient when it's presenting the tone. Uh, and it has a lot of intelligence in it as far as determining uh, a response to a screening. You can have a four frequency screening, typically 500, 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000 at say 25 dB or 20, uh, whatever you choose. Uh, or it can do a complete audiogram uh, and, uh, and even, even print out or uh, give you a, a PDF uh, of, the, of the test result. The AMTAS Pro does air, bone, and speech with masking. Right? Uh, don't worry about it. Your job as an audiologist is still secure. Uh, but uh, there are clinics that like to use this. It won't work on every patient. Of course, it won't work on pediatrics. It won't work on geriatrics. But if you had uh, you know, patients that, uh, that are able to take this test, uh, then it, uh, it, it, it has been developed by several universities collaborating with uh, Grace and Stather coming up with these methods, uh, algorithms, uh, and accomplishing this in, uh, in a way that, it, that is uh, uh, useful in certain places. Uh, it might be that this is a good thing to have in the doctor's office, at least a screening version of it, that doctor whose audiologist is across the street, and to screen people, just let this do it, and decide which patients have to go across the street to see audiology. You know? Sometimes this is a very good business builder by putting that in places and saying, would you like to offer this to your patients? Uh, naturally, the ones that fail the screening or, or, or what you can see have a hearing loss would be the ones that were referred. There is uh, another type of audiometer that uh, most audiologists never hear about, and that's a uh, an automated industrial audiometer. So uh, businesses, uh, manufacturing firms that have high noise that come under OSHA requirements and specifications, uh, if, if somebody is exposed to 85 dB or more eight hours a day working in a factory, though they have to wear hearing protection, and not only do they have to wear mandatory hearing protection, but they have to, uh, the, the company has to provide for their hearing test every year. So they will have a, a company nurse or technician that will have an automated audiometer very much like this. This is a very, probably the most uh, popular one. The company is Traymetrics. Tray most audiologists have never heard of Traymetrics because they don't make clinical audiometers. But in the world of industrial audiometers, that RA800 is the most popular, and it's completely automated. The, the user of it simply puts a, the headphones on, gives them the patient response button, tells them how to respond, closes the door of the booth, and hits go. And when this thing is done, it prints out the audiogram the way that the OSHA requirements uh, specify. So as I say, there are PC-based audiometers, and hybrids in the area of, uh, of clinical. Here's uh, some popular ones. This is interacoustics. This is the Grace and Stather AudioStar Pro. This is that uh, Pello, the newer one that I just gave you a brochure on. Uh, and uh, of course, that Matson Astera that you have is a PC-based. And there are other PC-based. Interacoustics has one. So Equinox, is that it? Yes. Uh, is the interacoustics, uh, and there is a company down in uh, Largo, Florida, called Medrex, and they have a very, very nice um, uh, PC-based clinical audiometer as well.